Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's special selection comes at us from Peter. Hello, I have a very unknown band with an album here. It is one person, themselves, doing everything on their own from their home studio. This is their latest release, Tema, which is Swedish for theme. The album is completely gapless, all the songs blend together, and the idea of the album is entirely based on recurring themes in music and in day-to-day life. This took about five years on and off to put together. Currently, this is an instrumental release, but a vocal version is also in the works. Very cool. This track is separated out into 12 movements. As he mentioned, it's all gapless uh, transitions between the ideas and is 50 minutes long. So, pause the video, grab a snack, make sure you got some water to stay hydrated, Let's dive in. Let's see what uh, Peter's doing under the artist name of Diggin, or maybe Digan. Let's check out Tema. Beautiful opening. A little bit of darkness, a little somber, but glimmers of hope. The little hint of bass we got there at the beginning of this section. That right there. Boom.
fantastic tone on everything. The bass sounds great. Our previous heavy guitars, the guitars where they're at now, all the string that we had in our opening movement. I'm, st I'm still growing on the, the drums. The snare and bass and cymbal sound great, but there's a tom that felt a little narrow to me earlier on. But I think it's just a personal choice. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Ghost notes on the snare sound great. Yeah, those ghost notes are such a good choice for this section. They're off the beat too, on the on the ends. Great atmosphere sitting around the syncopated gentier ideas from a bass kick and uh, the guitar. Yep, great time to change. I think that last guitar layer was making it feel real full. I noticed movement one also had this where the last few seconds of the track were the transition period. I'm curious if that's going to be how it goes forward or if we're going to see too many songs that uh, where the tracks utilize the, the metal idea to move into another metal idea rather than using these ambient transition uh, interludes. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that bass is just absolutely filthy. It's got so much punch to it. It is so good. I mean, I don't know what the rest of the album looks like, but we are about 10 minutes into this. 
quite impressive for a, a first release, I think. Said it takes five years, or took five years of work to release this. I mean, it it shows. interesting you you still have that uh, genty syncopated idea especially with this uh, brighter guitar over here uh, and then the bass kick that was underneath it so you still have this rhythmic concept as the foundation but it's a lighter more it's the lighter section than this heavy distorted stuff but you're still keeping a lot of the the same vibes, the same compositional techniques, it creates a nice synergy between the two sides of writing. Oh, we got a melody over here. Exceptionally tight rhythmic synergy between the instruments here on those faster 16th notes. So these, these ambient transition pieces feel distinct from the rest of the album, at least so far. I did notice there were a few EPs released prior to this that were groupings like uh, Movements 1 through 3 and then 4 through 7 I think was on another one. So I think this album was written chronologically, I wonder how true that is. You didn't start working on movements 4, 5, and 6 until you were done with 1, 2, and 3. In which case, over 5 years, it should show a growth in compositional maturity over the over the 12 tracks here, 12 movements. I'm curious if we'll see that, or if maybe you were working on all of them simultaneously. You get a new idea, like, yeah, that won't fit this song, you sort of save it to later. And so the album is still a conglomeration of all your experiences over the the uh, creation time rather than being a, a linear journey all right that's nice a little bit of a, a progression of this idea from the interlude.
very cool ornamental guitar stuff over here. Yeah, it's such a simple idea, but it does so much for the atmosphere. Oh, going for the straight beat. Yeah, borderline four on the floor, alternating bass and snare. So good. Those bends, tension into resolution. Yeah. Love how the drums are getting a bit more melodic here than we've heard. High intensity though. I could definitely hear some like belted higher range vocals or some really powerful harshes on top of this. It's interesting because the song moves from like the metal to these ambient interludes and that's how we sort of progress through the album. I kind of feel I kind of feel like there's this musical void that's just just this, right? And every once in a while if you stare at it long enough, sound comes out of it. And I think a lot of that comes from these songs having really great intros, build-ups like this into the main idea, but that many of the songs just end at the end of a riff rather than bring the song down. And so it's like at, at some moments the song, the music just stops and you're left st staring at that void again. And then out of nowhere, some metal comes out of it. You listen to it for a few minutes and then just ends. That's the end of that segment. Back to the void. There's those ghost notes. Man, those ghost notes are clean. Yeah, we got a piano.
this almost feels like a transition track on its own as well. We have this one idea. Oh, <laughs> I just got done talking about how many of the songs just end at the end of a riff, but there we actually had a winding down of a track. Of course, the time I bring it up is the time when I get proven wrong. <laughs> My timing's always so good with comments. I don't know. It's a double-edged sword. We are at the midpoint. I don't remember if this rhythm is identical, but this... That little guitar idea is from uh, Imaginar, the first one, not the second one as it's, you know, we're in right now. I think it's the first time I've heard a direct callback, but we also have a direct naming callback as well, so it immediately brings it to mind. those fast 16th notes I was talking about a couple tracks ago. This guitar line, wasn't it on the piano in the last track, Paracosum? You bring out the symbols and create that vacuum in the top range. There we go. Where one riff just moves into the next track. That's uh that's what I was talking about. Although interestingly, it seems like this one just has the ambience at the beginning of the track. It'll be interesting if anything that we hear here develops into the song or if it's more of the uh, the void that I've sort of interpreted the ambient uh, interludes to be. Oh no, we're building.
it's interesting here as well to hear all the reverb and delay, especially on this. Because the other side of the music can't have that. It needs to be sharp and precise for the syncopation. So it's cool to see this side of the uh, of Peter's writing. dig these moments yeah we had another track uh, I think it was track three where I commented um, still keeping the rhythmic elements of the metallic sections but building a more ambient relaxed mood out of it it's a really nice contrast to that super groovy metal without losing the identity of the album Reworking that same chord progression and rhythmic movement through the progression into a heavier section and then bringing the piano in with that fast uh, triple triple note idea bringing in the heavy dissonance there helps this movement to stand out a little bit from the rest just really leaning on that aren't you absolute tension right here the silence is not helping
yeah, a really nice progression there to pull us out of that. Now I'm noticing in the album art, there's 12 orbs, there's 12 tracks, and the orbs are split in the middle with a mirror representation. The two closest to the center have the same image in them, the ones next to them have the same image, and so forth. I was wondering if that split was present in here as well, but I don't think so. Just a gorgeous idea here and another one that's moving right into the next track without an interlude although at one of the shorter tracks two and a half this might be considered an interlude all on its own Really great spatiality on the rain. It, it feels wide and suggests a very large sound sphere, but it also isn't ignoring uh, a, a centered sound at all. It's, it's everywhere, which is how rain should be. I do like how this song isn't really going anywhere, it sort of just is existing. It's called Limbo. Coming in real heavy after that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, give me some of that. Got some kill switch up in here. I'm curious if that was done after the fact, or if you had a kill switch installed on the guitar to achieve that.
I don't know if I can really call them ghost notes in this track since they were still quite present. But yeah, I still love how often we use those lighter snare attacks in between the accents. This one has like a filthier industrial feel to it. It's an interesting contrast to everything else on the track. laying into this tension at the top of the track, this dissonance. Ooh. Interesting rhythmic decision there. I think it's the first time that I felt like you uh, went into a direction that felt uncomfortable rhythmically. We're going to talk about that during the analysis. Yeah, using the palm muted hits in the same way that we've heard the ghost notes on the snare used in previous sections. Really nice way to adapt something you've written a few times uh, and utilize in a different manner. Oh, we brought back the kill switch idea. Okay. I don't know when I, how I missed that. <laughs> Very nice. with that. Yeah. The variation applied to those sparse notes where there's still the key accented pitches in this line while ornamenting around them. Really great way to work that theme into this lead melody here.
melting over here. This is gorgeous. back for one final victorious explosion. <laughs> to bring it back to uh was it this track i think it was also movement eight though that had this anyways callbacks bringing them back Final transitory ambient section. So Limbo brought us the rain. Through that we experienced Temat. We come back out of that to get back into the rain. I'm going to wager the rain washes up by the end of this track and allows us to enter our final movement. My guess was wrong. It's a really good rain sample. I, I know I said that earlier. It's just, I, I gotta find a copy of it. It's so good. I've used rain in, in one of my tracks before, and I think this is infinitely better than what I found. I, I want that sample. <laughs>
So I can I can see how this could expand into something heavier, but I think it'd be really cool if we just kind of ride this beautiful ambience out of the album. Love the roll on that, uh... I don't know what that symbol was. It sounded like a hi-hat. Like it was uh, vibrating against an, another symbol, but it's it's felt too big, too bright and shimmery to be a hi hat. Okay, so we're gonna keep the vibe at least. Total. Uh, chord progression difference from the last few tracks in their heavy sections. Also a shift away from the rhythmic syncopation. We do have the drums playing syncopated, but our guitars are straight, uh, straight rhythm. Just toss in eighth notes. It's it's finding some solid ground amidst all the turmoil of the album. Oh, bringing this back. What was this, uh, track five? Maybe it was even track three. This was near the beginning of the album. Those little, those little bounces. Very cool journey. If you're still with me here, you listen to the whole 50-minute track with me. Uh, I wrote down a lot of notes. <laughs> we probably have another 20 or 30 minutes of analysis ahead of us. Uh, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll get through them a little quicker than I imagine. I have quite a few topics, though, I want to touch on. First, being just how everything is constructed. There's obviously the gent element to it, that hyper-syncopated rhythmic idea that utilizes the syncopation against a backbeat to create juxtaposing rhythms, uh, juxtaposing lengths between the melodic rhythm, the one that's that's bouncing all over the place, and the static backbeat. 
this is different throughout a lot of the track. Maybe there's some callbacks to it. We checked out Tesseract last week, their uh, Altered State album, and I mentioned then that I have a tough time remembering these details. Like, you give me a melody, and you play that melody back 30 minutes later, I'll be like, hey, I remember that melody from earlier, and I caught a lot of the callbacks throughout here that are in the more melodic or riff-based areas of writing. But when it comes to these rhythmic elements, as I mentioned during the test rect, when it all sort of just blends together for me, it's like, oh, that's that groovy, genty, syncopated stuff. And here it is in another song. Like, I, I know they're different, I can feel they're different, but you ask me to remember specific rhythms or grooves over a 50-minute track, and I'm not going to remember that. So, unfortunately, I can't comment too much about uh, the variation of these throughout. I did find some of these sections that were purely groove to be uh, a little bit not my cup of tea, but we're going to touch on that in a second uh, because I don't think it's necessarily a problem with the composition. It is a, a subjective thing, of course, but there is a very key part of context we're not looking at yet. Um, but those were a bit far and few between. A lot of these tracks found ways to embellish on top of that. Very few sections, that was the key element. Once we reached the halfway point, at least, the first half of the album did rely on these ambient metal syncopation sections that just had these elongated moments of the gent, and that was all that was really present. As the track progresses on, we get to the back half of it, um, into movement 7, 8, 9, 10 especially, we begin to see less and less of these gent-oriented sections and more elements where the rhythmic groove is an underlying function of stuff above it. And the stuff above it is what I really enjoyed about it. It's what made me... Well, I'll be honest, the first half of the album... We hit uh, like track three, I think it was, and I was like, okay, you know, I've, I've got a feel for what this dude's doing with his music. I'm starting to understand, uh, you know, where his tastes are, where his influences are, and what the general language is going to be. It spices it up here and there, of course, and, you know, track four was our first major interlude as a song. So we got to hear some of these more ambient sections, but like the metal section, I was like, okay, I get this, you know, I see what we're doing here. And uh, I was like, okay, you know, if the whole album's like this, it's going to be good. I'm not going to have anything bad to say about it, but 50 minutes is going to be a lot of just this gent. And, uh, you know, I'm glad to say that the back half expands on it in multitudes of ways that work really well for me, where I almost forgot that I had these, uh, these thoughts at the beginning of the album. Like, oh, I'm, I might not make it. The back half of this album went by so fast. <laughs> I remember looking at my timer in the corner, and it was um, and it was like 11 minutes into the recording, 15 minutes into the recording, 20 minutes into the recording. I kept checking like every five minutes. And then after like the 23-minute mark, the next time I checked, we were like 47 minutes in. I'm like, dang, we only have like two more tracks to go. <laughs> Where did all that time go? The back half is, to me, it's it's more filled out. The, the ideas are, are more present and have additional complexity and depth to them. There could be a thematic reason for this. It could be the purpose of the song to start out on a more simple concept and build from there. It could also just be something that I had thought about earlier. If you write a song, which a lot of these tracks I do feel are distinct. The We'll talk about this in a second. You write a 50-minute song... <laughs> over five years and your skills are going to change over that half decade time it's a very long time and as i mentioned these tracks were released in order at least by groupings the first three movements were released the second three or four movements were released in their own ep if this person wrote the first three tracks maybe simultaneously but finished them and then began on four through whatever worked on them simultaneously and finished them, we can see groups of where, we can see periods of this person's skill as they evolved over time. It makes perfect sense that the latter tracks will be the most well-defined, filled out, and better composed. Better's the wrong word. I feel like that's a bit too objective. 
more uh, more too subjective. They're they're more densely composed. The density is what drew me in personally. But uh, you know, I don't know how that came about. I'm curious then if it was just something that happened as the skill level rose or if it was intentional to start out uh, more shallower at the beginning and maybe even planned on it. I know this is going to take a while. I know my skills are going to uh, adapt and change and grow. I want this album to start simple where I'm at and show my growth over the time possibly. Uh, and maybe even eventually when the lyrics get added to it, that topic, that theme of growth is baked into it in such a way that it's just really strong synergistically between the lyrical themes and the musical themes as the character or the, the musical, the, the lyrical topics expand in depth. The music does alongside it. That would be very cool, actually. Um, by the end of the, tr by the end of the album though, uh, movements, uh, what is that? Eight, 10, um, we just, even seven, there's so many layers going on. It is just absolutely gorgeous to listen to this stuff. There's the drums and the drums are everything. There's so many, so much drum work going on. Even all the, the the ghost notes on the snare just always something happening there the bass is large and punchy the guitars are sometimes rhythmically oriented leaning into the same stuff the bass and the bass kick are doing but also there's usually like three maybe four ornamental guitar lines going on where they're just filling up all this space with sounds and textures and little riffs and ideas and it just sounds so fully fleshed out I think is the word I want there there is one thing missing again foreshadowing for a future topic <laughs> but for the most part I feel like as far as atmospherically driven music we've really reached the cusp here where anything more could become a bit cluttered it would definitely take quite a bit of work on the engineering side to add more. And I even mentioned this early on. I think it was track two uh, where we had a few layers added on and then we moved to a new idea entirely. And I was like, yeah, that was a good time to move on. I don't know what else you could have added there. I was really running out of room. It's just uh, Peter has a really great perception of the space that his sounds have and how much room all the instruments are taking up and when he can fill things in and when it's time to move on and remove ideas and that's consistent through the entire album now it'd be really odd to talk about this album without bringing up rhythm there are some really cool rhythms in here it is gent syncopation is built into it for the most part, the rhythms are groovy and palatable, easy to listen to. There was one part where it came in and we had this really rough syncopation against the backbeat. And I was like, ooh, you know, this is this is a bit rough. These are untread waters. This was probably about the same time we brought in the dissonant harmonies as well. So maybe that was the purpose of it, to create a roughness to the experience. Regardless, other than that one moment, every part in here is really easy to groove to, primarily because there's usually a crash cymbal giving us the metronome beat. Um, but also secondarily, because as far as I can tell, the entire album is written in 4-4. Four, four. This is not a bad thing. In fact, if you want to create palatable, genty music, this is a great way to go. The opposite side of the spectrum is bands that change their time signatures all the time, and they're really difficult to follow rhythmically. There is a middle point in here, and I, I think that's where I would like to see the artist progress on their next album, is to explore other time signatures and see if they can still write these groovy, palatable uh, rhythms within them. I think for this track, given that every movement is connected in some way, it kind of works to have everything in 4-4 to have that uniformity between them all. 
but I, I do find, you know, like I'd mentioned, a lot of the rhythmic stuff, especially the purely rhythmic stuff, kind of melds together for me. And, and and blurs together. I think having you know, everyone's oh you know movement five had the three four section. You know it it just gives me a little bit of a a change of pace to help identify some of the things. Though this is obviously more of a me problem, and uh, something that goes away with repeat listens too. As I can take in individual grooves, individual elements of groove on on separate tracks, and begin to see the, the nuanced differences in all of the the rhythmic syncopations um but i do think it would be very cool to just explore some stuff it doesn't have to be created i'm not asking for like 15 16 i'm not asking you to make stuff that's super disjointed and difficult to groove to um but yeah just try to get outside of that 4-4 comfort zone and see what happens you know if you if you don't if you don't like what you make chuck it in the bin <laughs> stick with the 4-4 but yeah, a little bit of diversity on the time signature, I think, is going to help. And it's going to open up new avenues for what you can do rhythmically as well. A lot of these rhythms also resolve themselves in that the beginning of the rhythm lined up with a downbeat, uh, the downbeat of one specifically of a bar, usually after just two bars, might also want to push that. See if you can make a four bar idea, an eight bar, 16 bar idea. And it's going to create um, interesting grooves where they aren't as easy to. What it does is it creates a whirlwind and it, it puts the question in the listener's head where's one? It, it can still be really easy to groove to. It doesn't become difficult to, to nod your head to or anything like that. But it does create uh, a bit of inconsistency and a bit of lostness that you might want to incorporate thematically into some music in the future. And, uh, you know, the usual disclaimer, maybe that feeling isn't something that is designed to be uh, in any of these tracks uh, thematically. But, uh, yeah, just... A little bit of, of rhythmic changes here and there, I think, would add a little bit of diversity on that front. The album flows really well. Oh, something else. And this kind of works with flow, but also with possible um, increase of skill over the production period. At the beginning of the album, I pointed out after track one, after track two, we have these little 10 second ambient sections and they help bring us from one track to another. The tracks themselves very rarely bled into one another. It was these, from an outside perspective and initial thoughts, sort of a forced way to chain the songs together because the meat of track one, the meat of track two, and the meat of track three didn't really intersect in any meaningful way but they were forced to be run on gaplessly because of these interludes. I don't feel that way anymore. The interludes have a storytelling reason, at least for me. We'll get to that in a second. I feel like I've said that a lot today. <laughs> um, but we see less of this as the album goes on. More of the tracks run into each other. The riffs that end a song lean into the beginnings of the next song or movement. Again, I don't know if this is purpose-driven or if this was just he became more comfortable with the project over the five years and stopped using that. Maybe it really was a crutch at the beginning and he felt he needed it less towards the end. I, I don't know, but it is a pattern I picked up on and I appreciate it. It's If it wasn't intentional, it shows the growth of the artist, but if it was intentional, it also shows diversity between the first half and the second half and I've already shown some parallels about how this album changes over time compositionally and this could just be another way of showcasing that. Either way I think it's fantastic that the album ended up this way regardless of how or why it did. Uh, but everything does flow together rather nicely. There's highs and lows within each song individually, but even the tracks themselves create highs and lows within the album's flow. Not just between some of our more ambient tracks like Limbo, uh, but also having varying elements of 
aggressiveness in the metal side, varying levels of depth. How many layers of instruments do we have in some of these songs? Some are less than others. How much dissonance do we have in here? Many of the songs are fairly consonant harmonically. They have their own chord progressions that explore their own emotions, but they're all fairly consonant in that the notes work well together. But there is two songs. One was the initialization of this idea, and the other was a callback to that movement heavy use of dissonance in it and the dissonance was paired with eventually silence where we had just that dissonance like a warning alarm going off um, and then these drums that came in every other bar or something like that building the tension and anxiety of this section so yeah there's an exploration of ranging levels of heaviness and weight and tension and aggression and dissonance throughout this as well. I feel like overall the album feels like it has a consistent idea of where the listener is at and where they need to be taken to. It's not just a continuation of the same ideas over and over and over through the entire song. There's an understanding that there should be a pacing to a 50 minute work of art. And that pacing is employed over the entire work, not just within each song itself. It's just fantastically paced. It really, at the end of the day, everything works well together. I still like my theme of the void, especially towards the beginning, but hold on, this gets good. We have this hum, this drone that happens in a lot of the ambient parts at the beginning where sometimes we'll have a little inkling of an idea flutter out and then fade off. Out of this drone, out of this nothingness, we hear full songs. Many of them sort of fade in, explore the song, and at the end of a riff, just stop. The song ends and we're left with the hum, the drone once again. This is a sonic void that occasionally and sporadically spurts out sound and music, but it's not something that we always get. This was my experience with the first half of the album. The back half of the album explores this raw droning ambience less and less. As I mentioned, that was sort of the ambient sounds that carried over between two movements in order to create the gapless playback. We saw less of this towards the end of the track, and so we saw less of these moments of silence. Interestingly paired with this, the music became more dense and in some cases more chaotic, more rhythmically intricate, more harmonically intricate, and we had instances of dissonance as well. Whatever we were staring at, the activity of it was increasing over time until the hum, the drone, was something we recognized no longer. It was constantly, frequently creating music. I don't know what any of this means. I don't know if it was intentional. I have no idea what the track titles mean and the lyrics aren't done yet. But just with this experience, it feels like I'm watching a natural phenomenon of noise and sound. And it's kind of cool from that perspective. Again, I don't know what the intention was of this album musically and thematically, but that's what I got out of it, and I quite enjoyed it from that perspective. It makes the rain feel even more soothing. It's almost as if all of this energy being released from this void has created something as natural as rain alongside something as human and a bit less natural as controlled sounds and silence, what we call music. Now, the one elephant in the room that I had mentioned multiple times is the vocals. This is an instrumental version of an album that will get vocals eventually, or at least it's planned to. This came out back in November of 2023. Yep. 
So a very recent release. There is room in most of these tracks for vocals, at least again towards the beginning when I found that there was more of an emphasis on the gent and less on the atmosphere and the texture and the ornamental ideas. The back half of the album I think works really well as an instrumental uh, portion. The first half certainly seems to have been made with vocals in mind. There is an area in all the tracks, but more present in the first few, where vocals need to be. It almost feels like the songs were created with this gap in the middle of the track, specifically saying this is where the vocals are going to be placed in the mix, um, and there is less layers going on at this time because the vocals are supposed to be what the listeners is paying attention to at this moment. Again, I kind of feel less of this towards the end of the album, and I forgot it was an instrumental at one point, because while vocals would have helped, no, would have benefited the song, it didn't feel like they needed them anymore. It felt like the songs were less created with vocals in mind, and more created as songs where vocals could be added later. And I think it's a very distinct change in composition technique from the first few songs to the last few. There is a very large difference in songs written with vocals and mind and songs written to be instrumentals. It is why I'm not a it is why I enjoy instrumental metal, but I don't typically enjoy instrumental variants of metal albums. When you create a work of art with so many layers and then you remove one, most of the time it's going to feel empty because the other instruments and their ideas were designed and based around the inclusion of this one. It's like drawing a painting and then releasing a version where you stripped out the blue paint, the blue color of it, utilizing like, I don't know, Photoshop or something. You just removed all the blue out of it and you released it. This is our non-blue version of it. Yeah, but the blue is there for a reason. <laughs> and that's how I feel about albums where they release an instrumental version later. It's the, the vocals were there for a reason. Even if I don't care what they're saying, their texture, their delivery, their timbre, their rhythmic elements, their pitches, all of this is playing around and against all the other instruments. When you remove it, something feels gone. And so the first few tracks here sound like music where vocals were intended to be done with them. And so they do feel a bit anemic. There's definitely a place where something feels missing. But the back few uh, tracks, they don't. They feel fully complete. There is certainly space to mix in vocals there if, if Peter wants to. I don't think the songs are going to be ruined by adding it, but I don't think they need it like the first few tracks do. And I think that is another impressive testament to the way that Peter's skills have evolved over the course of this project. Again, I kind of perceive this as being composed and built over a time period. It still feels that way in a lot of ways, and I really hope I'm not wrong with that read. But the back few tracks feel rather complete with just the instrumental bits. And I think that's a showcase of really strong writing. All right, I think that wraps it up. I quite enjoyed this. Um, right now, this artist has 68 monthly listens. And... Definitely needs to get bumped up. If you enjoy this, uh, go ahead and I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description, which normally I put a link to YouTube one. So it's really not that big of a difference, just where it normally says original YouTube video, it's going to say, uh, you know, listen on Spotify instead. Um, yeah, if you enjoy it, you'll find that link there. Peter, if you're watching this, you, you've got a phenomenal project here. I think once you add vocals, at least to the first few tracks, you're really going to hook some more people. And then it's really just about promoting yourself. 
so much of music is about advertisement and marketing. Unfortunately, it's it's it sucks. I deal with it too. <laughs> I think I have a pretty strong channel here and I, I don't advertise it as much as I should. And that's probably one of the reasons why it's a bit smaller than I think it should be. Less popular. Um, so, like, I'm in the same boat as you, I suppose, <laughs> in, in my own project. But I don't think there's anything you can really do to the music to improve it. I think it's solid where it's at. And this is going to be a ridiculously strong debut once you release, uh, you know, the full version that you have in mind. Um, or at least I think you have in mind. You mentioned that vocals are on the way. It sounds like that's your definitive version, possibly. Maybe, I don't know. That's, that's my take on it, but I suppose you could also say this is the definitive and maybe you're putting vocals on in order to bring in more people because instrumental music doesn't always work for everyone. I, I don't know. I guess there's two ways to go about that. Uh, regardless, though, what you presented to me here is 100% solid. I have no notes really for changing it. It's... It's well done on every... The production is... I didn't even bring that up. The production's great. Uh, all the mixing, the... Yeah, just... You just got to get it to people's ears, I think. All right. Those are my thoughts on... Uh, I meant to look this up. I don't know if it's Diggin or Digin. D-Y-G-N. Uh, I apologize for butchering your artist name, Peter. Uh, and Tema, the album. Let me know yours. Down in the comments, let me know if you enjoyed this, anything that stood out to you, anything that you'd want to add on to what I said or correct me on. If you have your own perspective on any of it, just let me know. All that stuff down in the comments section. If you enjoyed it, like I said, head over to their Spotify page. Show some love from the Critical Reaction community. Uh, also in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. You can find my music here, uh, ways to support the channel, a, a bunch of stuff. Go ahead and check that out. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. That wraps it up for today. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 p.m. UTC. We're going to wrap up this week's theme of sludge metal. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.